Hello everyone, welcome back to my second channel, welcome back to Jack in the Books. Now here's the thing, the summer time, the summer time <laughs> is when I start reading like an absolute maniac because, you know, I just want to be outside, I want to be in the sun, and the perfect way to do that is to go and sit and read a good book. I also just got back from Hay Festival, which was in Wales, I did a little residency there, which was so wonderful, I felt so lucky and fortunate to get to do that, and being surrounded by books and authors and book clubs, essentially, was just so wonderful and magical, and it's made me so excited to read. And so, with that in mind, this is my June TBR. And I was going to start out with like a realistic TBR of like a few books, and then when I started going through <laughs> the books that I want to read, it turned into this. So I'm hoping to read all of these books this month, we'll see. The good news for me is that I've already read three of them. Um, I've already finished these three books. I'm not filming this on the first of the month like I normally do, meaning I have already read a couple books. Firstly, Greek Lessons by Han Kang. Now I went to a talk that the author did in New York at the Pen America World Voices Festival, which was so just insightful and I felt so privileged to get to be in that room because um, Han Kang had come all the way from Korea and had a translator with her and getting to hear her read her work in Korean in the original um, language and then hear it translated was just uh, such a cool experience so I feel very grateful for that. The book is so lyrical and whimsical and the descriptions are absolutely gorgeous. You have a man who is losing his vision and a woman who is refusing to speak and those loss of senses or um, the removal of those senses was fascinating to read about um, and to see an author tackle. I actually think she wrote this book after The Vegetarian, but books she wrote later in Korean have been translated first, so this I think is actually her second novel, although it's her fourth to be published in English, I want to say. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> this is translated by Deborah Smith and Emily Ye Won, and I just thought it was really lovely. It kind of, in the middle, it did lose me a little bit. Um, I kind of had to take a little break from it because it was getting a little bit dense, um, but the ending was, was beautiful, so I liked this book. That was Greek Lessons. Then we have The God Desire by David Baddiel, um, and this is about being a reluctant atheist. I found this so fascinating. Um, David Baddiel talks about um, being culturally Jewish um, and how he um, kind of blends his Jewish heritage with his lack of belief in a god. Um, and I thought it was really interesting. I flew through this in one sitting because I was just so intrigued by it. Um, so that is the God desire, all about the desire to believe in a god and how the author believes that is what proves that god does not actually exist. Um, so maybe a controversial one for some people, but I find it really interesting just to read someone else's insight into atheism and his reasons for thinking that way. Um, I also read Do Not Call the Tortoise. This is by Gareth Howell Jones. It's a, an essay collection. It's about ignorance and philosophy and art and the meaning of life and nature and the inherent value of things. Like, the things have innate value without us assigning value to them. It's essentially the argument of this book. The title is taken from a Walt Whitman quote, which is, and do not call the tortoise unworthy because she is not something else, um, which I think is really lovely. And that was very interesting, kind of boggled my brain a little bit and had to be razor focused on that one, but it was cool. And now moving on to books I am yet to read. So I'm actually heading to Nice, um, to the south of France, in about an hour, so <laughs> I'm gonna be taking these books with me. This is gonna be my reading list for while I'm away on holiday. I kind of picked some like relatively short books, but um, this means that I generally will go through like one a day if I'm just like sitting on a beach or on a sunbed. So yeah, that's why I'm taking these. Firstly, long listed for the Women's Prize this year, we have I'm a Fan. The unnamed narrator of I'm a Fan is in a seemingly unequal relationship with a man she wants to be with. She is also addicted to cyberstalking the man's other lover, an online influencer she refers to as the woman I am obsessed with. Written with clear and unforgiving eyes, this exhilarating debut explores obsessive love, race, privilege and power dynamics and heralds Sheena Patel as one of the most exciting and original voices writing fiction today. Sounds so cool and very up my street, so um... I'm looking forward to reading that one, and I love that cover too. Then I bought this at Hay Festival. This is Daddy by Emma Klein. I believe this is a collection of short stories um, which explore similar themes to The Girls, which is Emma Klein's kind of cult classic novel all about a cult. Um, and I really enjoyed that book. I thought it was so interesting. 
um, and I liked her dissection of society, um, and I think this book does more of the same. So, a man travels to his son's school to deal with the fallout of a violent attack and to make sure his son will not lose his college place. Then in another story, a young woman trying to make it in LA working in a clothes shop while taking acting classes turns to a riskier way of making money. These razor sharp stories upend the simplest of relationships, crackling with the seductive darkness also present in Klein's phenomenal bestseller, The Girls. I would describe it as a seductive darkness too, I think that's a really great way of wording that. So. That is Daddy by Emma Klein. But before I jump on to the next book, I just wanted to let you know that today's video is very kindly brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building a website or an online brand. And if you're like me, this will be music to your ears, but you don't need any coding experience to get started. You just use the templates that Squarespace have beautifully created. You can customize them, make them completely your own, make something very unique and personal to you. Because as I always say, often the first impression future customers often get of you is your website. That's the first surface that they encounter. So you want to make sure they know that you're good at what you do. And fortunately, Squarespace completely have you covered. There's also some really cool features. For example, you can create your own blog so you can update people on what you're up to behind the scenes. And also there's wonderful analytical tools so you can see what your audience is really engaging with and therefore what content you should be making more of. If you'd like to give Squarespace a go, you're in luck because you can actually get a free trial over at squarespace.com and test the waters, have a play around, see what you can create. And then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website or domain, you can use the code jackinthebooks at squarespace.com slash jackinthebooks to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You're welcome. So thank you so, so much to Squarespace for working with me on this video. And now on to the next book. Another Hay Festival author was Max Porter. This is his book, Shy. This is the story of a few strange hours in the life of a troubled teenage boy. He is wandering into the night, listening to the voices in his head, his teachers, his parents, the people he has hurt, and the people who are trying to love him. He is escaping Last Chance, a home for very disturbed young men, and walking into the haunted space between his night terrors, his past, and the heavy question of his future. From the best-selling author of Grief is the Thing with Feathers, Shy is a novel about guilt, rage, imagination, and boyhood. It is about being lost in the dark and realizing you are not alone. Doesn't that sound interesting? Also, like, look at those, look at that inside page. Hello? I think this is going to be a fascinating insight into growing up as a young boy. Um, so we'll see. I think it's obviously a very troubled character, um, but very intrigued by this. So that is Shy by Max Porter, and I loved uh, grief is the thing with feathers. This was a kind of spontaneous random purchase um, in a bookstore and I just read the description and thought yeah I, I want to read this instantly. So um, Death Gregory has disappeared, abandoning his diaries in a seedy London hotel. Discovered by Lawrence Lucifer, they depict a clique of intellectuals living a life of squalid debauchery. Writers and artists consumed by loves, lust, and a quest for innovation. But as they satisfy violent appetites of the flesh and mind, their descent into darkness accelerates. First published in Paris in 1938, when Lawrence Durrell was only 26, the Black Book was banned in Britain for nearly four decades due to its obscenity, and the novel's iconoclastic power is just as thrilling today. I'm so intrigued by why this was banned in Britain, literally for 40 years. Um, and I love that it sounds kind of erotic and dirty, filthy and smutty and um, just fascinating. So that is The Black Book. I'll, I'll let you know. I feel like it's going to be one of those books with like in very interesting prose. So it's on the list. Then the final book that I'm taking with me on holiday is Where Reasons End by Yeon Lee. This is a book about a woman who is communicating with her son who has recently committed suicide. So I imagine she's kind of like imagining that conversation. I think because she's like unable to comprehend the loss of her son, she then is kind of having this imagined conversation with him about why he chose to do that. So I'm very intrigued by this. I think it could break my heart. And you know what? I'm okay with that. That's that's exactly my taste in literature, as we know. So I think this is going to be really cool. Um, and I went to see Yeon Lee at a talk in New York. Um, and the way she spoke was just so endearing and captivating and so I was like I need to read something that you've written and so I'm gonna start immediately. Now these are books I'm gonna read once I'm back from my travels. Um, firstly we have Time Shelter. This is by Georgi Gospodinov and translated by... please put translators names on the covers. It is translated by Angela Rodel. Um, and this is the first Bulgarian book to win the International Booker Prize which is super cool. Um, so it just won this year. It already has the little badge 
on it, so they obviously printed these very quickly. Um, but yes, um, I'm actually going into this pretty blind. Um, I haven't yet read a description, I just know that it won this award, and that's why I want to read it. Um, and I kind of enjoy the experience of going into a book without any prior knowledge of it, like not even having read the blurb. So that's what I'm doing with this book. I have actively chosen not to read the back of this book um, and just go into it and, and find out for myself. So that is Time Shelter. Please, no one spoil it for me in the comment section. I will literally... I don't know what I'll do. I, I <laughs> That was the worst threat ever. I was going to say I'll block you, but I, I wouldn't do that. Just please don't... I, I just won't read the comments, okay? <laughs> just in case. Just no spoilers, please. I'm going to read it. I'm, I'm going to go into it with, with uh, no prior knowledge. The next book is this one. I love this title. I am homeless if this is not my home. This is by Laurie Moore, and I think it's her second novel. Finn is in the grip of middle age and on an enforced break from work. It might be that he's too emotional to teach history now. He's living in an America hurtling headlong into hysteria after all. High up in a New York City hospice, he sits with his beloved brother Max, who is slipping from one world into the next. But when a phone call summons Finn back to a troubled old flame, a strange journey begins, opening a trapdoor in reality. It will prompt a questioning of life and death, grief and the past, comedy and tragedy, and the diaphanous separations that lie between them all. Laurie Moore is the award-winning author of five story collections, three novels, and a children's book. Her most recent novel, A Gate at the Stairs, was shortlisted for the 2010 Orange, Pli Orange Prize, which is now the Women's Prize. Moore is the Gertrude Conway Vanderbilt Professor of English at Vanderbilt University. There you go. And this actually is going to be published on the 20th of June, 2023. So this is like an early copy. But I loved Self Help by Laurie Moore. Um, I thought it was wonderful. Um, and so I'm intrigued to read a novel, a full novel by her, because Self Help is kind of like short stories. Okay, three more. We then have Big Swiss by Jen Began. Um, obsessed with the cover of this one. I think it's so brilliant. Greta liked knowing people's secrets. That wasn't a problem until she met Big Swiss. Oh, and it's also soon to be a major HBO series starring Jodie Comer. So I've heard a lot of hype about this book. Um, I think it's gonna be really interesting. And I love that dogs are clearly gonna be a big part of this story because I think all stories should be about dogs. All stories ever. This is a book I need to finish. I started reading this. I read the first, I mean, it's not even that long. I read the first, if I could find the page, I read the first 41 pages, um, and I think there's only 100, so I just need to finish this book. Um, this is kind of an elegy for this guy's mom. Um, it's called A Woman's Battles and Transformations. It's by Edward Louis and translated by Tash Orr. See, how much better is it when the translator's name is on the cover? Come on now. Um, this is by the same author of History of Violence, um, a very popular and respected author in France. I found the first 40 pages kind of boring, but I'm going to stick with it um, and, um, and, and finish this book at some point this month. But yes, that is A Woman's Bodies and Transformations. And then the final book that I would really love to read in June is In Memoriam by Alice Wynne. Now, not to flex, but I do have a dedicated copy. How cool is that? Um, I got to interview Alice Wynne at Hay Festival and just from the way she was talking, I was like, I need to read everything you've ever written because she is brilliant. Um, her brain is fascinating and so I can't wait to read something that she's written. And a lot of people who I really respect um, and love have recommended this book to me. So I'm like, okay, I, I need to read this one. In 1914, war feels far away to Henry Gaunt, Sidney Elwood and the rest of their classmates, safely ensconced in their idyllic boarding school in the English countryside. At 17, their two young twin list, and anyway, Gaunt is busy fighting his own private battle, an all-consuming infatuation with his best friend, the dreamy, poetic Elwood, not having a clue that Elwood is in love with him, and always has been. When Gaunt's German mother asks him to enlist in the British army to protect the family from anti-German attacks, Gaunt signs up immediately, relieved to escape his overwhelming feelings for Elwood. The front is horrific, of course, and though Gaunt tries to dissuade Elwood from following him to the battlefield, Elwood soon rushes to join him. Once in the trenches, Elwood and Gaunt find fleeting moments of solace in each other, but their friends are all dying in front of them, and at any moment, they could be next. An epic tale of both the devastating tragedies of war and the forbidden romance that blooms in its grip. In Memoriam is a breathtaking debut. The title, In Memoriam, is making me nervous. Is, you know, is one of them gonna die? Are both of them gonna die? This sounds like a book that is going to rip my heart out, and for that reason, I cannot wait. That is my June TBR. Um, 
There they are. There's the thumbnail shot <laughs> right there. Uh, I always forget to do that. So anyways, these are the books that I'm going to be reading in June. Um, you can follow me along on the Storygraph and Goodreads and Instagram where I and TikTok <laughs> where I'll be sharing my reviews as I go. Um, but thank you so much for watching this video. All the best. Stay in touch. Have a wonderful June and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye.